Hello, everyone, and welcome to Different Stages Radio. I'm your host, JJ, broadcasting from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And on today's show, you may know my guests from such bands as Scar the Martyr, Act of Defiance, and Calm, who have a brand new release coming out very soon, and we'll be doing a string of West Coast dates starting on June 1st. Please welcome my guest, Henry Derek Ellis. How are you? Hi, JJ. Thanks for having me, man. I'm doing well. I'm having, well, my morning coffee turned into my afternoon coffee, so that's just how it happens. Living the dream, huh? I don't, I don't know about that, man. And it's, it's, it's rough out here in Southern California, you know, post pandemic, the inflation is, is hurting a lot of people and I'm, I'm certainly feeling it on my end as well. Is gas still around like five bucks a gallon or something stupid or? Yeah. You know, it creeps up. Um, I think right now it's like, it's around five now. I mean, you know, the hotter it gets, the, the, the higher the, the, uh, the fuel, prices will will get for sure and it's you know it's like clockwork every year and you know as soon as the summer rolls around it's yeah it turns into six seven and then and then like on the west side it's like eight dollars a gallon yeah santa monica venice culver city it's just like you know you really got to strategically strategically shop for your your fuel you know so I guess I will kind of go in line, I guess, with the tour that you're doing starting June 1st, 10 shows in 10 days, starting in Chico, ending in L.A. You're perhaps looking forward to some slightly cheaper gas, maybe in Oregon and Washington. I, I Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, it, no, no matter how you slice it, you know, it's 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 such an expense, you know, being on the road and, and being in an oversized vehicle, you know, with gear and stuff. Um, that, that's the one thing that I'm like always truly worried about when I'm out there in, in some capacity is like, you know, uh, who's, who's playing accountant, who's, who's being, who's, who, who is, you know, logistically and economically really crunching the numbers to make sure that, you know, we can break even because, you know, um, we're not going to go out and make any money doing this. Um, not, not, not at the stage that we're in, you know, a, a relatively new band, and not being established, you know, not not having like, you know, um, a great track record in terms of like touring or playing shows in a band like this. You know, even though we've played shows, it's been like, you know, OK, what's convenient for us to go play? And, and you know, uh, if if you're playing a show in your backyard, you know, for no money, that's one thing. But you know, to get on the road and, and to play consecutive dates for no money or for little money or very, very little guarantees. Yeah, it becomes it becomes a different thing entirely. And uh, I know a lot of bands and artists experience this type of thing. But, you know, if we were talking about this before, you know, I don't know, pre-pandemic, it might be, you know, slightly less of a concern. But uh, again, with the inflation and everything like that, uh, th there's a lot more factors and a lot, a lot of other things to talk about. So um, I think I think we're doing all right in terms of transportation. It's like, you know, we're going out um, in, in a truck that has like flex fuel, which is slightly cheaper. Hmm. But um, but, you know, there's lodging, there's there's all these other things in addition that that it's like. Um, you know, as as the dates creep up and get closer, you know, you, you start to kind of do the math and, and, <laughs> and you're, you know, so that's that's where we are. It'll it'll be fun. We'll make the most out, out of it for sure. But is it also a bit of a fair assessment to think that when you're, say, just out of school or your early 20s and you're doing this run and you just you simply don't care. But after being in the industry and being on the road and ages, you can't control age. You just get to a point of, you know, what you want, and what you don't want. And like you said, you would even just to escape at zero is definitely better than losing money. But it also seems was it all worth it? And you're, I would assume that you're hoping that this will snowball into perhaps more opportunities and just more band awareness, being able to sell more product, that sort of thing. Well, I mean, you know, age isn't a factor in terms of like, you know, any, we don't have any like, boundaries or physical detriments of any kind but it's like yeah the, it's more of a financial thing i mean you know um when you're younger like you were like you were suggesting you were saying like 
you know, it's less of a concern because, well, maybe you can come home and, and just shack up with your parents for a couple of months. Like, you know, it doesn't, you're not going to come home and be destitute and, you know, yeah. uh, and you don't have the financial responsibility, maybe the bills and the mortgage and all that good stuff. N- not that I have the mortgage, but you know, rent in Los Angeles is, is no fucking joke. So, um, but you know, for us, it's just like, yeah, no, we're, I'm, I'm 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 what I consider a radical realist, right? I'm going to go out there and I know that, hey, it's going to be fun. We're going to make the most of it. We're going to try to break even, not lose our ass. But at the same time, um, it's good to be productive and to do something. You know, there's so many bands who are just so afraid. So or or maybe just like so reluctant to to put themselves in harm's way in that regard, you know, because it is really tough. But um for me, it's just the act of being productive and doing something while we have um, material that's coming out. You know, we're putting out an EP and then uh, this summer we're putting out our second full length record. So it's really the act of of, of getting out there and, and trying to, you know, do something, do anything. In this current musical climate, it's getting harder. And there's so many bands. There's more bands now than ever. And, you know, it's harder to get heard in some ways because of the oversaturation of of releases and and it being streaming you know us living in that world with very few record stores you know unless you have a smaller label that's going to promote with you know with a smaller roster or you're on a bigger uh label that has more resources and that wants to actually promote your band and give you a little bit of money which that that's that's another problem that's what's not happening you know all of the legacy labels you know that are are really championing championing you know specific bands they have like you know less than a dozen bands they're really putting money into you know um bands don't get cannibal corpse money these days you know there's only a few bands that 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 get that kind of attention or those those pr budgets and you know and well deserved of course for a band like that um i'm just using them as one example but mm-hmm. uh yeah i'm rambling sorry about that no no worries but i was gonna say regarding the new ep and also knowing your love for physical product as as i do as well i assume there will be physical product of both the ep and the new full length Safe absolutely and yeah absolutely. Do you have any eps available in time for this run that you're doing or is that too soon uh, no, because the EP, um, because it's three songs and it's kind of like more or less, um, it was originally just going to be a single. And then I, I figured like, well, I, I think we could do a little better than that. And I'd like to, um, nothing against bands who want to put out a single like every six months or whatever, but it, you know, I know that's the industry standard now, you know, that's what, our, that's what bands are trying to do. But I like, like you were saying, physical product. I like knowing that we can put together a release that that's that's worthy of like you know um we could do something a little better than than just a single even though you know our songs are 10 minutes long uh so a single is what two or three songs i guess the equivalent of some bands and so i was like well you know what for this ep let's i know we can't get crazy because uh, we have a full length coming out so we can do the vinyl for that um but let's do CDs and cassettes for for this EP, and uh, let's let's do a limited thing and make it really special. With like, um, our label is is putting together like a limited edition box version, which is going to come in like a uh, like a wooden box with like a patch or something like that. Nice. So so yeah, I mean, you know, smaller labels, underground labels, they they get it because they understand how we think and they have that same passion and you know i'd say 95 percent of the time they're collectors as well you know they they have they just understand uh i don't want to use the word market you know because it's it's that, that's kind of lame you know it's not like they have a, a team of record executives <laughs> you know trying to uh um, figure out how, how do we market this thing but you know it is part of it and the people that want the music they want to buy it in some form they want it to be a tangible physical release I can appreciate that as yeah. as as you can and I think it it might it may be a smaller demographic you know uh, of of fans 
um, that want physical product, but it's important. And it's definitely important for a band like Calm because, um, you know, with a band like Calm, I, I would not can ever consider just having a um, digital uh, release. It's just not not something I'm interested in doing. And but I think you nailed it on the head with when you're dealing with a smaller label that are fans first, they understand the importance of the product. So it's not maybe necessarily like you said about marketing the product. It's just the label knowing as a fan what would a fan want and respecting that and understanding that. Is that fair? Yeah, it all, yeah, of course, one hundred percent. And also understanding that you know, going out of your way to do something special and spending a little more money on say a limited run of, of something like a limited edition color or, or something like that it is important too, because, you know, well, if there's a handful of them and we have to spend more, a little more money, we still want to make this special for, for fans and, you know, the people that they're able to get their hands on it, you know, and it, it, it might mean something more to them. And uh, that's, that's important as well. And I understand that, you know, it's not all, always in my budget to get, you know, the, the 12 fucking colors that bands are coming out with. But if it's a band I really like, I'm, I'm going to make that effort, you know, to get to get the cool color or, you know, to get the limited edition version with the bonus tracks and all that stuff. And and as you know, I mean, metal, especially like metal, people are just nuts, you know, like um, the, the collectors out there that that are just really serious about um spending money on stuff that yeah it, it, you know they will spare no expense to get like the the most limited edition of of something you know and, and it's and it's also fun right i mean there 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 are worse worse things to spend your money on worse habits other habits to have you know and our respective walls show that hey <laughs> I, I i know it's just some of many walls that we have so there you go yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, I'm at a I'm at a, a place now in my life where, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to f not focus so much on having stuff, but then, you know, every time I get there, you know, I, I, I come to the realization that it's it's not just stuff, right? This this is I mean, this is the important stuff. <laughs> you know, this is it's these are the things. it's your identity, it's who you are. Yeah, of course. And it's like, you know, um, it's not enough just to, you know, stream it on Spotify or whatever. Um, it's not enough to, to have that mental jukebox playing in your in your head, you know. Um it it really it, it really is about the relationship that you you have with that particular band or artist or album and being able to, you know, to really um have that record in your possession that you know you care so much about. You know, well, it's funny you mentioned that because this wasn't even the, uh, where I was going to go, but you brought yeah. up something in mind. So, never mind Spotify. I have a hard enough time when it's CDs or vinyl where bands will have, you know, the just I'm, I'm looking at one of my shelves over here where there's, um, you know, stuff with there's there's no spine. I get yeah. a big enough panic looking at what I want to listen to when I can't see bands' names on the spine. So, that's why I give full credit to the calm album back there when i got it nice big bright white letters on the spine it jumps out on the shelf so whenever i'm kind of gazing and don't know what to spin it's like that's always a reminder so yeah doing spotify and like trying to have that mental jukebox like you said in your head it's, it's even i'm sure you probably have those issues too with your own collection sometimes it's like oh what am i, I gonna listen to i i certainly do um you know i'm not my collection is 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 alphabetized somewhat, but it isn't perfect because I just I'm I am somewhat lazy when it comes to that. But you know everything is in in alph alphabetical order to some degree. But it's like if I'm looking for Slayer, you know I'm I'm gonna pull out like Sinister or Stop Young Lad because it's not it's not perfect, but it's like oh the S's are somewhere fucking right here, and then you know um, everything's also. Um, I have everything separated by genre too. So I have all my metal stuff separate. That helps, you know, like on my rock, my, my, my punk and post-punk and, um, you know, classic rock is all in the pop section, right? It's all just kind of like one, but it's at least just having yeah, everything from A to Z helps. 
And then, of course, jazz, hip hop, country. Having the genres separated helps me because it it all it also just depends on your mood, right? You know, True. and and um, so I think that's why I do that. And I I think it's funny because I've talked to some collectors and it drives them nuts. Like they can never, you know, they they, they it's it's A to Z pretty much really. Yeah, uh, that's me in my case, but I can respect your case because it's still alphabetical within each respective genre. So that's not complete weirdo. <laughs> yeah, and and again, because I'm just like I'm not. It's not that I don't care, but I I uh. You know what it, I, I you know what I think it is, man. Like I'm out of shelf space completely. So mm -hmm. now you know, I'm at a spot now where I have crates all over the floor. I have shit all over the place. Like I I just out of space and. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I challenged myself just to pull a couple hundred records. It's like I got to try to move some stuff, get rid of some stuff to make some make some more shelf space. And. Um, yeah, it's it's also just going to help me when I move, when I get out of here and, you know, it's just a matter of time, you know, apartment living in Los Angeles, you know, you're not going to be in those you're not going to be there forever. So. Yeah, I kind of challenge myself to to start with two hundred, and then if I can if I can move another two hundred, that'll be great. Because again, I really do need the shelf space. I mean, it's funny. I want to. Um, I just want to point out what you were saying about the the spine on the Calm LP. I actually did that somewhat consciously because I I helped out with the layout for the record, and I think that was kind of like where I was going there. You know, because I. <laughs> Look yeah, and, 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 we appreciate. Well, and you're right because I'm looking at I'm looking at it right now, and it and it and it pokes out. I mean, I, I could see it from across the room, you know. And exactly. I, I kind of like, yeah, if I'm looking, it's like I can't find my Queensrÿche records, but there's calm. You know what I mean? Like, it helps. You're in business now. Now yeah. back to this box set as we as we kind of scared off there. So when can we expect this cassette box set CD? Uh, oh yeah. Um, Really soon, actually. I mean, the turnaround time on CDs, cassettes, and you know, pre pretty, pretty short turnaround time there. So in a couple of weeks, I think uh, we're going to put out an announcement on Monday. Okay. Um, uh, we're releasing um, the single of the EP, which which is first uh, first light of the last dawn, uh, alongside a, a lyric video for that. And uh, yeah, some pre-orders will, will will be announced, I guess, in the following week or maybe maybe on Monday, um, very soon. Okay, yeah. and then the full length you're looking sometime late. The, the full length, I think, we're looking at September. Okay, uh, we'll, and we'll start doing pre-orders maybe you know um, six weeks before that or something like that. And and uh, yeah, it will it will be on vinyl LP. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I made a conscious effort to. Uh, along with the label you know we wanted we didn't want to do another double lp we wanted to do something you know uh, i I, re I really wanted to just trim the fat and and you know make make it also like single lps are more affordable you know i mean a double lp is you know you you got to charge like 30 30 plus you know 30 bucks plus us and just like man you know let's let's do a single lp this time and you know the the fifth song, first light of the last dawn, was the one song that we had left over that was also like kind of the dark horse. And I'm like, well, this this could live on its own, you know, the, outside of the the album. And you know, to have that fifth song on the record would have made it a double LP mm -hmm. with like you know three sides and then an etching. You know, it's like, oh, sure, that could be cool, and I like mm -hmm. I like that too. But um, I also like I like the idea of spending twenty bucks on it on an, on a record. You mm -hmm. know? It's like it, it doesn't happen anymore, you know, because uh, records are expensive to manufacture. And, you know, if you're a smaller label, you know, you have to charge exactly a, a certain amount and, you know, and then they're shipping, you know. So if you have like double LP 180 gram, you know, that's that's you're looking at more expensive shipping costs. And then, you know, um, you know, it's it, it might be a record that weighs two pounds but then you know because you don't want it to get damaged you know you have have to really um think about packaging and and vinyl mailers aren't free no and and to get oh. really really good ones you know it's it's expensive and mm -hmm. you know and the, the packing and all that good stuff you know yeah it's 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 a process but 
So, you- so that's that's kind of where we were going with that, with with the with the LP. But yeah, um, got to have the vinyl, you know. Totally. And I was going to add to that as far as cost wise that some average person may not know about too is how much more once you get into gatefold land, that gets crazy. So you can still have a single record, but whether it's just a standard sleeve, maybe you have a bit of gloss on it or something. But once you, if you want to graduate to gatefold, then it's crazy. So at that yeah. point, it's best to have a double because sometimes the vinyl itself isn't so expensive. It's the overall packaging, like the jackets and the inner sleeves and all that are, are crazy. Correct. Yeah. But as a collector, you also understand, you know, how unattractive sometimes or or how like um, troublesome it can be to cram two records in one sleeve. Oh, you know, yeah. There's that, you know, there's that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it's not fun trying to get no, those no, things no, out no, of there. No, there's, no, no, there's that. And then the, there's the overall aesthetic, of course. Um, I, I, yes, in a perfect world, you know, uh, we, I, I we every every double record I have would be in a nice gatefold and everything, but you know I don't worry about that too much anymore. I, I guess because I I just like um, I, I'm just happy to have the music most of the time, as long as it's a really good pressing and it sounds good. You that's know, yeah. that's the yeah. only thing I care about. But I I I just I can't even fathom you, you know these these labels putting out these like digital sounding releases you know or or from digital sources or whatever or 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 trying to cram you know too too much music on one side because then it just starts to sound like shit and it's like why would you you know why would you how can you justify charging that much uh, for this record and why would you want to sell this record in such a poor you know you're not exactly representing the music in its finest form but because, as you know, because vinyl has become such a um, um, a hot item, right? Uh, it's 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 become such a trending kind of like medium for music. Is that well that that does become secondary for a lot of labels because they know it's it's this is about the dollar amount. This is about what we can sell this for, and you know what we can get and just get them out the door as quick as possible. And that's the only thing I. I just hate them that really just, you know, and, and as you know, a lot of the time the bands and artists have nothing to do with this. They have exactly. Yeah. They, they just start whoring it out. And now that's where, where I've been fearful that they're starting to wreck something that was cool. That was starting to snowball again, 20 years ago, that was becoming this thing. And now it's like, ah, you're, you're, you're very likely going to screw yourselves again. And you're once again, only yourself to blame because you took too much advantage of it and you did half-assed jobs and yeah, it's it's just a shame. We, I'm sure we could talk about Record Store Day too for hours on end as well. But yeah, it's it gets quite discouraging. It it certainly does. I mean, the only thing that that I have to really say about Record Store without taking up too much of our time here is that yeah. you know this this past year was the first time I didn't participate at all. I'm I might have glanced at the list once, and you know it's like yeah, oh, that's cool, that could be cool, but I. Of course, I went. I went to uh, several record stores on, that day, but you know, I, I stayed far, far away from the record store day releases. So uh, the inflated prices, the retail prices. I mean, you know, you, you have so many flippers now that um, that end up with this stuff some way, somehow, mysteriously um, beforehand, and you know, you, you see this these things on eBay, and um, if there's anything, I would just say. It's not about record stores anymore. It's not about independent record stores. It's not about keeping vinyl alive or any of these romantic kind of things, right? That that it was, you know, initially at some point when it started, maybe. But like anything, um, you know, it just got completely ridiculous. And um, yeah, I, I I would I would also just uh, put it out there that you know if there's anything that anyone's interested in record store day wise um yeah just put it on your warrant list on discogs and 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 you'll get it for half price like six weeks later it's just like it's not even worth it man well to give you some quick insight when when i had the shop and you get the records like you're talking about the people just scouring through stores and just buying stuff for the sake of buying it looking to turf it over and because i had you know the the metal shop you were there yeah 
and I would I would only bring in stuff that was specific to what I sold. I'm not about to bring in other things that aren't relative because it's the store had a certain vibe. If I had a regular customer, say, if you were coming by and you asked about a Springsteen title, let's say, or something else that you want me to bring in, it's like, sure, I'll bring one in for you. But I'd have people coming in that were due to their record store runs on record store days, just looking to buy stuff. And it's like, I never saw you before ever. And you're coming in asking, where is your record store day stuff? And I'm like, what are you looking for? It's like, I didn't build a section. I made sure that anything that I got in was for people like yourself or other yeah. people that were regular customers that supported the store and the environment and wasn't whoring themselves out just for the sake of it being record store day. Just wanted to throw that out there on that topic. Well, absolutely. And I get it. Yeah. Um, I get it. I, I, I think, I think a lot of collectors are really, um, you know, we, I, I guess I just speak for myself. I, admire and appreciate you know um these brick and mortar mom and pop record stores that are clearly curated you know they have it's by design right you know everything is curated this is what we have this is what this is kind of what we like we know this is what some of our customers like and this is it this you know it's it's not um, you're not going to go in and get the new Taylor Swift. You know what I mean? And that's that's special. You know, I mean, if someone comes in and they want it, you can get it. Of course you can. And, mm -hmm. and you know, sell it to them for for whatever the, the going rate is. But um, that's the, the, those are typically the locations I seek out. You know, I, I want a curated collection of records. Um, you know, I I don't even go into Amoeba anymore here. And and since they've moved, um, I did like the the old location, the history and, and and everything, but also the fact that because it was a bigger location, they did have more stuff. Uh, and at that time, they had less, um, a lot less things that that would appeal to like tourists and you know like they they had less posters and t-shirts and you know just dumb stuff toys and stuff so um and then their new location just seems to be a bit more um you know targeted to to tourists and it's right there in the hollywood hollywood walk of fame i mean amoeba is not the best example but it's a good example of how you know you got to change with the times but you got to you got to suit the needs of that particular area and location and clientele. But if you're just an independent, you know, poor old record shop owner, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can have whatever you want. So, you know, you it's by design and it should be that way, you know, and it shows you have identity. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. that's, that's, you know, before the industry took a shit and, and, you know, back in the day, um, that's kind of how a lot of record stores were, you know, you back in the, the, um, the day that, that, you know, I mean, yeah, eight seventies, eighties, nineties, you had, you know, this string of mom and pop record stores that are doing quite well because, you know, this was obviously before, um, the internet, the iPod, the, the, uh, the digital presence of music. So that's how shops were. And, and it was, um, I was born too late somewhat because I experienced yeah. a little bit of that, but I, I'd love to go back there. Well, no, know, it was awesome to see the little shops that were getting in all the weird stuff from England or Germany or Japan, where North America was pretty much just the, you know, the, in my case, the Canadian yeah. releases or the U S releases. And that's pretty much it. You'd see those in abundance, but it's like, Oh, what's, th what's this magazine even from like, what's Kerrang, what's metal hammer. Like what's Burn Magazine? You didn't; those were a big deal rather than just seeing Circus or Hip Parader back in the day. So that's what made those those small shops unique. Absolutely, I mean, not even the small, not not only the small shops, but you had, you know, even like Tower Records would have a lot of. That. I mean, they they would have all of the import magazines, but then they would have all of the fanzines. And for me, growing up, getting into music getting to to i mean it kind of like really helped create the person that i am you know it it it, it helped shape my identity and my personality and my taste towards music fanzines these are written by fans these these were 
either like, you know, done very cheaply, like with, you know, put together with staples or, you know, a standard newspaper print, you know, and you could, these things cost a couple bucks and you could get, you know, it, it was, for me, it was like the source, uh, the go-to source in terms of like getting um, someone's, someone's out here with a mower. So hopefully you can't hear that too much. It was like a go-to source for underground music. The, the music that was kind of neglected by, you know, uh, mainstream, the mainstream and bigger record stores. So, um, but yeah, to Tower, I think was, was, people forget how important Tower was too. And I think there's still one left in Japan. I think one does remain. Is That's that the only one as yeah. far as, as, as far as I know. Um, man, I'd, I'd, I'd give me, a, give me a day to go record shopping in Japan. That, that just sounds incredible. I think we might have to make a trip. I'd love to, man. I mean, you know, they, there's, there's, uh. <laughs> There's that one store there. I forget the name. Um, I have a friend. Is that the multi-level one? Because I've heard about that one. That's yeah, each, well, each floor is so, a different. Like it's like my a friend. Well, I think so. My friend Bitsu sure. shops there, and they have like a, um, a lot of metal stuff. And uh, yeah, every time she, um, she she will occasionally like post photos, and I, I yeah, every time I see it, it's like it's it just looks incredible and. There's something about like the, the Japanese culture too. They they're they're a sucker for packaging. You know, I love like all the obi strips. And, oh yeah, love them. Uh, the the Japanese lyric sheets and and there's all this additional kind of content. You know, so they 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 love that. Um, a lot of the materials are 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 uh, very different packaging, as you know, from from the U.S. and, and Canada and Europe. They just they care so much about the aesthetic of of this um, of everything. And and I kind of I've always admired that about the culture there, and the fact that they still sell more CDs than vinyl, even with the vinyl resurgence. Japan is still primarily about the CD, which I think I think is great. Like I like both formats. But yeah, yeah, I think that's interesting, and it makes sense. Um, you know, I love CDs as well, but for a completely different reason. And I I think like. Um, if you want to have a, a pristine recording, you know, of of that album of that artist or whatever, you know, or if you're an audiophile, you, you can get the what what is what they used to call them, like SACDs and like, mm -hmm. this, you know, all this other stuff. And, and of course, you know, there's there's a huge debate on, you know, what what sounds best to, uh, you know, just the history of the CD, you know, CDs were were originally produced for classical music because like this, they wanted to, th this is how you get, you know, the best possible sound. We want, we want, we, we want that digital, you know, recording, uh, the most pristine recording that you can get, but it's also, um, I mean, you know, CDs don't cost 30, $40 anymore. <laughs> so exactly. that, uh, yeah, the, the, it's, it's, crazy how much things have shifted in terms of uh, the demand for vinyl and the costs for vinyl versus CDs. Now back to you, the Calm albums. <laughs> we got a little bit off off, off the road there. Do yeah, we well, you know... No, no, it's it's good topics, and that's the thing I think we can talk about just the industry and music and physical product for days on end, no question. I, I knew this would come up, and I like it. So it's very, it's very good. But I wanted to make sure, that, make sure that you get some band pimping into this. There you go, man. Well, well, thanks for uh, steering me in, in uh, the right direction. Yeah, we're, we're not done yet. Um, <laughs> do you have working titles for either of these releases? Yes, uh, the yes. EP, the mm -hmm. EP, which, which is essentially... Um, was spawned out of the the one song from um, the recording sessions for the full length album is entitled First Light of the Last Dawn. And um, it's, there's going to be three tracks. Uh, I don't want to say too much. Um, th there's, there will be a nice surprise on the EP and it, and it, and it is a cover. So, um, 
Yeah, I wanted I wanted to include that as a bonus track, but also it's something that we did for fun. We did it for us. We did it like live in the studio, which is not typically how bands record. That's not how I I've ever. I think this this. This would have been the first time I ever really got to record like this. So, I mean, we did it kind of like as a celebratory thing. You know, we wanted to celebrate like the fact that we got to the finish line. You know, we, we were able to record this record and it was a process. Uh, it always is. But this one was a different process. I had never really encountered some of the obstacles um, of recording. Uh, cer certainly not in the same way that we did with this this record so that's the ep the full length um is yeah like i said coming out of, i think like august september ish um it's entitled grave impressions for an unbroken arc mm -hmm. and i know that's a lot, that's a lot but but there's, there's a lot of material on the record um in terms of um uh, there's a lot of dynamic range. I would say there's there's a lot going on um, in a narrative sense with the new album, and the fact that I took over on vocals and and the songwriting aspect, the lyrics, obviously has a huge um, part in that. And uh, you know, I did that by necessity, and I also did it um, kind of. I mean. I even forget, you know, I thought about this the other day. This man, this is the first time I've gotten to work on a um a heavy project, you know, an um an album where I was the vocalist where I was singing what I wanted to sing. I didn't have anyone tell me what to sing, how to sing, uh, you know, I was able to produce this thing um in terms of uh, of in terms of the songwriting and in, in my, you know, the vocal composition or the musical composition, I mean, you know, it was this this is the first time in a long time I've gotten the chance to do that. And, you know, as a band, we produced the album ourselves, you know, even though we worked with some some cool engineers and, you know, uh, people that most certainly I respect in the industry and have produced, you know, um, a lot of great music. So. I got to give myself some credit there in, in terms of the, you know, the lyrical content, the, the musical composition and uh, yeah, the, the words. So words were very important uh, for this album. It is, it is a, uh, th there's, there's a lot of like um, lyrical content that I think you can sink your teeth into more so than the first album. You know, they're, they're, there wasn't any real um, substance in terms of, uh, lyrically on the first record. Um, or I should say not enough for me. Um, and, you know, even though I did like some vocals on the record, it was vocals are more so an aesthetic thing. You know, aesthetically, it was it was part of the sound, you know, it was uh, they were not vocal point, you know. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how people can can connect or if they do connect to this album in a very different way, you know, because of the the narrative aspect. And compared to Resilience and Despair, would you say that it's musically much of a departure or similar? Attack? It's, 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 a, it's a departure musically as well. Okay. Um, uh, because, well without getting too long winded here. I mean, when we were coming out of the first record, it took almost five years to put that record out. These were old songs. I was so tired of, of, mm -hmm. you know, of, of these long sprawling kind of drawn out, um, musical pieces that, that I just like, and I, the, you know, the band at the time, they, we, we, um, we consciously, uh, made a decision to explore, you know, faster tempos and, and different subgenres, and so that's where we were going when we were um, in the rehearsal room, like writing new material. Um, even though we were kind of like we had riffs, we didn't really have any. I didn't have any songs written, 
but that's where we were going musically. You know, we wanted to explore, we wanted to get out of this dead zone of just, you know, having these long sprawling songs with, with monotonous riffs that were kind of crawling at a, a snail's pace. You know, we wanted, we wanted to explore uh, some of our other influences, you know, in terms of death metal, black metal, and uh, um, even like a lot of progressive classic rock stuff. So that's what you're going to hear on the new album. So, you know, some of the doom elements are still there and uh, there's, there's certainly that. Um, I think sonically the aesthetic of having the ambient atmospheric sound is still there. And those are the, the to me, those were the two most important like attributes that I wanted to contribute to this record. You know, it's like, I want to keep those like, to me, that's, that's the the foundation of the band and with the lineup it just kind of happened the way it happened uh, just in terms of like people moving and well people moving away geographically i should say and then also people moving away from um the band you know in a certain way or where we were going you know where we were headed um it it re- it required like a certain level of, of um, dedication almost because, you know, you, you have to be present when you're writing new material and, and, you know, you're trying to be creative with people. It's like, you have, you need that awareness and that presence and you need, you know, um, that attention to detail, you know, and, and when you don't have that and you're trying to collaborate and work with people, it's really difficult. So it was primarily our drummer and I like Dave Ferrara, um, that we had to take the reins and uh once we got a new guitar player i knew that everything would fall into place because i was looking for a guitar player that could do a lot more um i just i was looking for a guitar player very different than the way i play and i have a a blues based style you know i I most definitely am from that tony i owe me um kind of background of playing and you know that's 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 my thing but i wanted someone that could could do all the flashy stuff you know i wanted someone that could do the the george lynch nice thing if he if he wanted to or if if, if the song called for that so we were able to get um mensu kim who who was um uh from originally from korea and when he moved out here we just got lucky and we kind of connected and and we were able to bond in in a way that it's like he 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 wasn't afraid to to he wasn't afraid of the challenge you know the 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 music was the departure for him musically you know playing baritone guitars and tuning down to a and shit like that here's an alternate tuning we tune to a it's like not something a lot of guitar players want to hear to be honest but um he didn't back down and he wasn't afraid and i you know i gotta commend him for that because you know, it's, there. you know, a lot of guitar players, man, are just so comfortable in doing what they do and they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. And I remember we definitely auditioned some guys that were like, you know, they, you give them anything other than standard, you know, they, they just can't. Yeah. They, you know, they throw their hands up and like all everything that they thought they knew about their music theory and everything. It's just like goes out the window. It's like, man, you may, maybe just, uh, you know, maybe play around with the material and, and see what you can figure out by ear first, you know, uh, before we have this like academic academic discussion of of like what, you know, um, I don't know, man, pe- pe- people have this, you know, when you're dealing with guitar players, you know, you have. It's a whole other kind of And you're one yes, of and, <laughs> Yes, and I and I love them. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. you know, but there's there's a time and a place and, and stylistically it's like this is not something for everyone. And I get that. And it it, it I knew it was gonna take a special person to to really get down on my level and try to figure out what the fuck is this? What how we how do we approach this? Well, I mean, you know. Um, stylistically it's different but it's it's not like we're we're not playing like this like very progressive uh, style of technical you know metal 
Although there are there are though there are some tricky there are some tricky riffs and progressive um stylings on on the record but yeah so that 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 was interesting and that was a challenge but I'm 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 really happy where the band is now and and what we accomplished with the material and I think the fact that it is a departure is I'm not scared by it I mean I I I'm I don't I don't think it's going to really represent the band as a whole or what um what we did with the first record uh, and I, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, this is something I thought about earlier on. And, and um, the more I thought about it, the more I kind of just, I, I, I was able to kind of realize that, well, most of the bands I like have, have had a pretty interesting career. They've all evolved. They're, there's, there's an evolution of every band that I like personally, that I think is really intriguing and interesting. And every record is different. You know, and you can kind of put that together in a way. It's like, well, there's some real growth there. You know, they grew as people. It, something happened in their lives. It wasn't just flipping the script for no reason. I mean, you know, that, that's not why. Um, I mean, yeah, a lot, everything from death metal to, to you know, all these black metal bands. I mean, look at a band like Enslaved, you know, it's like, <laughs> and where they were able to go. Uh, they're always just pushing the boundaries. I mean, you could say the same for band, same same for bands like Neurosis and Mastodon, and um, you know Anathema and uh, I love all of you know yeah. band. Well, absolutely yeah. one of one of my one of my favorite bands of all time, and and I mean they're they're probably one of the best examples. Yeah, and um, yeah, we we definitely haven't taken any crazy turns like that, but yeah, no, I. So yeah, the, the, no, but I'm excited about it because it's nice to hear that it's not just oh you just okay we'll just plug in and do another one of the same that it, I can hear and feel that there's going to be a bunch of growth and I'm excited. So that that's awesome. good. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to hear that from you because you know we know there's definitely going to be some fans that that only like that that they like the first record and that's kind of like more, more or less what they like, you know, like they, they only listen to like doom and that's it. And I think, I think, uh, I don't think that's the case for most metal fans, but you know, you, you definitely have like, you have a lot of people that like, they, they just have their thing and there's nothing wrong with that. And um, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm really, I'm really um, pleased with the first record. I mean, I, I still stand, buy it i still stand behind the material and the songs and um everything we did musically vocally it it's it's a thing and and um it, it was it was the the starting point for the band but like i said you know when you're listening to it just remind yourself man it took five years to fucking put this thing out and it's like it was it was a journey that that was its own thing the new record is another thing and you know it's it's been a long time coming you know because i i never would have known that the first record would have took as long as it it did um and it was beyond my control you know um I, i'm glad it came out i'm glad it was its own thing and uh i'm, I'm happy having said that i'm happy to move away from it but there it is up there and if can people still get it? And if so, where? You can still get it. Um, you can, you can, yeah, you can get it from our our record label, and uh, maybe maybe we can include some include some links and all that good Definitely. stuff. And that's, um, and then there's a couple of distributors, you know, here and there. But I I would say like, um, I mean, Bandcamp is always a good option too. That seems to be like like a good go to source for for a lot of people, but um. Yeah, that, and obviously, like, there's some, there's definitely um, a couple of record stores here and there that you can grab, uh, where you can grab it. I'll make sure that there's links, but I also wanted to ask you before we wrap things up, that is there, can we expect anything in the way of a follow-up to this? Tell people about this who may not know, because this could be under the radar to some people that simply just aren't aware. Yeah, well, my, you're holding my debut record, uh, which is the the full length and that's the devil is my friend under uh you know my name Andrew Derek Ellis that was 
uh, definitely, definitely a labor of love. Uh, I recorded it with a good friend of mine, Steve White, who kind of co helped co-produce it. And he um, also played drums on it. Um, had a lot of fabulous musicians play on it. Um, my friend Neil, um, Neil Tyman, who was in Devil Driver at the time. I think he plays for Carnifex now. Uh, am I saying that right? You know that band? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not all that familiar with them. Um, Very techy. Okay, really? Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, just had a bunch of cool people play on it. You know, it was like one of those records I always wanted to make. And then um, I put out an EP around the same time. Very different sound. Very different sound. More, more like alternative country um, stuff there. But in terms of a, a follow up, I I did go into the studio. I had a couple of sessions where I did record four songs, and um, unfortunately, it was with an engineer I've never worked with before, and he kind of ghosted me. And he still has the material still to this day. I, you know, I hope I can obtain it and, and get and, and finish it, uh, finish some of the, the, the tracking. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would definitely oh, cool. like to, yeah, I would definitely like to re record, you know, more stuff. I have more songs written and, um, I definitely do have another full length album in me for sure. So solo endeavor but time will tell it's really just like more of a financial thing at this point but it is something that's in your mind and like you said you do have an album's worth of material that will hopefully see the light of day at some point absolutely yeah i think my primary focus is calm for sure you know we put so much time and energy and effort into i'm getting another call uh i'm gonna ignore that um i'm putting all of my energy into calm you know, it, it, it took a it took a lot out of this uh, out of us to to complete this record. Calm have a West Coast run happening in Chico, California on June first, including dates in Oregon and Washington. Um, ten shows in ten days, wrapping up in L.A. EP coming out soon, full length coming out late summer, early fall, we'll say. And you can find the debut album on the Calm Bandcamp. That's Q A A L M. We'll have links and so forth in uh, the video description. And anything else you'd like to say for now? Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, keep you know, keep in touch with us. Definitely look out for the 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 debut. Um, I'm sorry. Definitely look out for the EP. Uh, and uh, keep your eyes peeled for the vinyl release, which will be coming out in September. But yeah, other than that, thanks a lot. Um, JJ, for your time, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate you.